the pathogen in the final three sections, we focus on the problem of finding shortest pathogen in a graph together with some closely related issues. The problem, let g equals 2v e be a directed graph, assume that each edge i, j, and e has an associated weight c, i, j. The weights can be used to model a number of different things. We will picture here the interpretation in which the weight c, i, j represents a cost for going directly from node i to node j in the graph. Earlier, we, we discussed, discussed the distrust algorithm finding shortest the paths in graphs with the positive age costs. Here, we consider the more complex problem in which we seek shortest the paths when costs may be negative. Among the motivations for studying this problem, here are two that particularly stand out. First, negative costs turned out to be crucial for modeling a number of phenomena with shortest the paths. For example, For example, the nerves, the nerves may, represent may represent agents in a financial, in a financial setting, setting, and the CIJ represents CIJ the cost represents of the transaction, transaction, in which we buy from agent I, then immediately sell to agent J. In this case, a path would represent a succession of transactions, and agents with a negative cost would represent transactions that result in profits. Second, the algorithm that we developed for dealing with agents of negative cost turns out in certain crucial ways to be more flexible and decentralized than dice trust algorithm. As a consequence, it has important applications for the design of distributed routing algorithms that determine the most efficient path in a communication network. In this section and the next two, we will consider the following two related problems. Given a graph G with weights, as described above, Decide if G has a negative cycle, that is, a directed cycle C, such that the summations of C i j, summing for all i j, are uh, in C, which is less than zero, where the i j is in the directed cycle C. Uh, if uh, the graph has uh, no negative cycles, find a path P from an original node S to a destination node T with a minimal total cost. That is, uh, the summations of Cij summing for all Ij in P should be as small as possible for any ST path. This is generally called both the minimal cost path problem and uh, the shortest path problem. In terms of our financial motivation above, a negative cycle corresponds to a profitable sequence of transactions that takes us back to our starting point. We buy from I1, sell to I2, buy from I2, sell to I3, and so forth, finally arriving back at I1 with a net profit. Thus, negative cycles in such a network can be viewed as good arbitrage opportunities. It makes sense to consider the minimal cost ST path problem under the assumption that there are no negative cycles. As illustrated by figure 6.20, if there is a negative cycle C, a path PS, from S to the cycle, and another path PT from the cycle to T, uh, then we can buy an ST path of arbitrarily negative cost. We first uh, use PS to get to the negative cycle C, and then we go around C as many times as we want, and then we use PT to go from C to the destination T. Designing and analyzing the algorithm. A few false starts. Let's begin by recalling dice trust algorithm for the shortest path problem when there are no negative costs. That method uh, computes the shortest path from the origin S to every other node V in a graph, essentially using a greedy algorithm. The basic idea is to maintain a set S with the property that the shortest path from S to each node in S is known. We start with uh, S equals to the set of uh, little s, since we know that the shortest path from S to S has cost zero to itself when there are no negative agencies, and uh, we add elements greedily to this set S. As is our, our first, first greedy, greedy step, step we, we consider, consider the minimal, minimal cost, cost age age leaving, leaving node, S. node S. That is, uh, that is mean uh, of C S I, mean where of the minimum is taken S among I, all the possible I for all B, not the plumbing, okay, the that vertices. Is. Let v, little v be a node on which this minima is obtained. A key observation underlying the algorithm 
is that the shortest path from S to V is the single edge path SV. Thus, we can immediately add the node V to the set S. The path SV is clearly the shortest to V if there are no negative edge costs. Any other path from S to V would have to start on an edge out of S that is at least as expensive as HSV. The above observation is no longer true if we can have negative edge costs, as suggested by the example uh, in figure 6.21a. A path that starts on an expensive edge but then compensates with the subsequent edges of a negative cost can be cheaper than a path that starts on a cheap edge. This suggests that the dash style greedy approach will not work here. Another natural idea is to first modify the costs CIJ by adding some large constant n to each. That is, we let cij prime equals to cij plus m for each h i j in e. If the constant m is large enough, then all modified costs are non-negative, and uh, we can use dice trust algorithm to find uh, the minimum cost path subject to cost c prime. However, this approach fails to find uh, the correct minimum cost paths with respect to the original cost c. The problem here is that changing the costs from c to c prime changes the minimal cost path. For example, uh, as in figure 6.21b, if a path P consisting of uh, three edges is uh, only slightly cheaper than another path P prime that has two edges, then after the change in cost, P prime will be cheaper since we only add two amp to the cost of P prime while adding three amp to the cost of P. A dynamic programming approach. We will try to use the dynamic programming to solve the problem of finding a shortest path from S to T when there are negative edge costs but no negative cycles. We could we try could an idea try that has worked try an for idea us so that far. has worked for so us so far. I could be to so find I could be to the shortest path using path only the first, using only I, the first notes. I notes. This idea, this idea does, does immediately, immediately work, work, immediately but it can work. be made it can to work, be made with, some to work with some effort. Here, however, we Here, will discuss, however, a, we will discuss and a more efficient solution, and a more efficient the Bellman Ford algorithm. The Bellman Ford the algorithm. development of the a dynamic programming, of a dynamic as programming, a general as algorithmic a technique, general, is often general credited to the work technique. of Bellman in the 1950s. And the Bellman Ford shortest path algorithm was one of the first applications. The dynamic programming solution we developed will be based on the following crucial observation. 6.22 If G has no negative cycles, then there is a shortest path from S to T that is simple, i.e. does not repeat nodes and hence has at most n minus 1 edges. Proof Since every cycle has non-negative cost, the shortest path P from S to T with the fewest number of edges does not repeat any vertex V. For if a P did repeat a vertex V, we could remove the, the portion of P between consecutive visits to V, resulting in a path of no greater cost and fewer edges. Let's use OPT of IV to denote the minima cost of VT path using at most I edges. By 6.22, our original problem is to compute OPT of m minus 1 s. We could instead design an algorithm whose subproblems correspond to the minimal cost of an st path using at most i edges. This would form a more natural parallel with the dice trust algorithm but it would not be as natural in the context of uh, the routing particles we discuss later. We now need a simple way to express OPT of IV using smaller pro subproblems. We will see that the most natural approach involves uh, the consideration 
of many different options. This is another example of the principle of multi-way choices that we saw in the algorithm for the segmented least squares problem. Let's fix an optimal path P representing OPT of IV as depicted in figure 6.22. If the path P uses at most I minus 1 edges, then OPT of IV is equal to OPT of I minus 1 B. If the path P uses uh, I edges, then the first and the first H is VW, then OPT of IV is equal to C VW plus OPT of I minus 1 W. This leads to the following recursive formula. If I is greater than 0, then OPT of I V is equal to the minimum taken among the following two choices. One is OPT of I minus 1 V, and the other is the mean of OPT of I minus 1 W plus C V W for all W in V where the minimum is taken. So if we use using this uh, recurrence, we get the following dynamic programming algorithm to compute the value of OPG of M minus 1 S. Shortest uh, path of a uh, parameter G S T, where N is the number of nodes in G, and we have an array M which started from 0, 1, 2, 3 until M minus 1 V, define the M uh, with uh, the position 0 t equals to 0 and m with position 0 v equals to infinity for all other little v in capital V for i from 1 to 3 until m minus 1 uh, within uh, inner loop for little v in v for all vertices in v in any order we compute m over i v using the recurrence 6.23 then after we break out from this double loops uh, we return m of m minus 1 s. The correctness of uh, the method follows directly by induction from 6.23. We can bound uh, the running time as follows. So table m has n square entries, and each entry can take big O of n time to compute. As there are at most n nodes w in v, we have to consider. 6.24, the shortest the path method correctly computes the minimal cost of an ST path in any graph that has no negative cycles and uh, runs in big O of n cube time. Given a table M containing the optimal values of the subproblems, the shortest path using at most i edges can be obtained in big O of i n time by tracing back through smaller subproblems. As an example, consider the graph in figure 6.23a, where the goal is to find the shortest path from each node to t. The table in figure 6.23b shows uh, the array m, with entries corresponding to uh, the values m of iv from the algorithm. Thus, a single row in the table corresponds to the shortest path from a particular node to t. As uh, we allow the path to use an increasing number of edges. For example, the shortest path from node d to t is updated four times. As it changes from d to t to d to a to t, to d to a to b to e to t, and finally d to a to b to e to c to t. Extensions, some basic improvements to the algorithm, and improve the running time analysis. We can actually provide a better running time analysis for the case in which uh, the graph G does not have too many edges. A directed graph with n nodes can have called close to n square edges, since there could potentially be an edge between each pair of nodes, but many graphs are much sparser than this. When we work with a graph for which the number of edges is m is significantly less than n square, we've, uh, always, we've already seen in a number of cases earlier in the book that it can be useful to write the running time in terms of both m and n 
This way, we can quantify our speed up on graphs with relatively fewer agencies. If uh, we are a little more careful in the analysis of the method above, we can improve the running time bound to big O of mn without significantly, significantly changing the algorithm itself. 6.25. The shortest step path method can be implemented in big O of mn time. Proof. Consider the computation of the array entry m of iv according to the recurrence 6.23. We have m of iv is equals to the minima taken among m of i minus 1v and the mean value of m of i minus 1w plus cvw where the w is taken among all possible vertices in v. And uh, we assume it could take up to big O of n time to compute this mean value since there are n possible nodes w. But of course, we need only compute this mean value over all nodes w from which v has an h to w. Let us use mv to denote this number. Then it takes time big O of mv to compute the array entry m of i v. We have to compute an entry for every node v and every index 0, which is less than equals to i, which is less than equals to n minus 1. That is, the index i is between 0 and n minus 1. So this gives a running time bound of big O of n times the summations of mv, summing for all little v, uh, with index little v in capital V, all the vertices. So in chapter 3, we performed exactly this kind of analysis for other graph algorithms and use 3.9 from that chapter to bound the expression, the summations of mv, summing for all little v in capital V for undirected graphs. Here, we are dealing with the directed graphs, and mv denotes uh, the number of edges leaving v. In a sense, it is even easier to work at the value of the summations of mv, summing for a little v in capital V for the directed case. Each edge leaves exactly one of the nodes in capital V, and so each edge is counted exactly once by this expression. Thus, uh, we have the summations of mv, summing for a little v in capital V, which is equal to m. That is, if we plug in this into our expression big O of n times the summations of n v, summing for all little v in capital V for the running time, we get a running time bound of big O of m n, improving the memory requirements. We can also significantly improve the memory requirements with only a small change to the implementation. A common problem with many dynamic programming algorithms is the large space issue arising from the m array that needs to be stored. In the Bellman Ford algorithm as written, this array has size n square. However, we now show how to reduce this to big O of n. Rather than recording m of iv for each value i, we will use and update a single value m of v for each node v, the length of the shortest path from v to t that we have found so far. We still run the algorithm for iterations i equals to 1 to 3 until n minus 1, but the row of i will now simply be as a counter. In each iteration and for each node v, we perform the update. That is, m of v is equal to the minima taken among the original m of v and the minima of c v w plus m of w where the minima is taken among all possible w in v, we now observe uh, the following fact. The, throughout the algorithm m of v is the length of some path from v to t, and after i rounds of updates, the value m of v is no larger than the length of the shortest path from v to t using at most i edges. Even 6.26, we can then use 6.22 as before to show that we are done after m-1 iterations. Since we are only storing an m array that indexes over the nodes, this requires only big O of n working memory. Finding uh, the shortest paths. One issue to be concerned about is whether this space efficient version of the algorithm saves enough information to recover the shortest paths themselves. In the case of the sequence alignment problem in the previous section, we had to resort to a tricky divided and conquer method to recover the solution 
from a smaller space efficient implementation. Here, however, we will be able to recover the shortest step paths much more easily. To help with the recovering the shortest step paths, we will enhance the code by having each node v maintain the first node after itself on its path to the destination t. We will denote this first node by first of v. To maintain first to of maintain v, first we, of update, v, its we value update its value whenever, whenever the distance m of v is updated. updated. In, other In other words, whenever, whenever the value of m of v is reset to the minima, min of uh, c v w plus m of w, c v where the minima is taken from the other possible w in v, we where the minima is first taken from the other to the node w that attains this minima. Now let p denote the directed pointer graph whose nodes are v and uh, whose edges are the set v and first of v, the main observation is the following. 6.27 If the pointer graph p contains a cycle c, then this cycle must have a negative cost. Proof Notice that if first of v is equal to w at any time, then we must have n of v which is, equals to, which is greater than or equal to c v w plus m of w. Indeed, the left and right hand sides are equal after the update that sets first of v equal to w, and since m of w may decrease, this equation may turn into an inequality. Let v1, v2, v3 until vk be the nodes along the cycle c in the pointer graph, and assume that vk v1 is the last h to have been added. Now consider the values right before this last update. At this time, we have m of vi, which is greater than or equals to c of vi vi plus 1 plus m of vi plus 1 for all i equals to 1 to 3 under k minus 1. And we also have m of vk, which is greater than c vk v1 plus m of v1, since we are about to update m of vk and change first of vk to v1. And it calls adding all of these the in m of v i values m of v i and we values cancel and zero, we get which is zero greater than is the summation of c v i plus one plus v i c plus v c v k v one where the summation c v k starting from index C-V-K i starting from equals to one to i equals to k minus one. And uh, this is a negative cycle as claimed. Now note that if G has no negative cycles then 6.27 implies that the pointer graph P will never have a cycle. For node V, consider the path we get by following the edges in P. From V to first of V equals to V1, to first of V1 equals to V2, and so forth. Since uh, the pointer graph has no cycles, and the, the sink T is the only node that has no outgoing H, this path must uh, lead to T. We claim that when the algorithm terminates, this is, in fact, the shortest path in G from V to T. 6.28 Suppose that G has no negative cycles and consider the pointer graph P at the termination of uh, the algorithm. For each node V, the path in P from V to T is the shortest VT path in G. Proof Consider a node V and a letter W equals to first of V since uh, the algorithm terminated we must have m of v equals to c v w plus m of w. The value m of t equals to zero, and hence the length of the path traced out by the pointer graph is exactly m of v, which we know is the shortest path distance. Note that in the more space efficient version of uh, Bellman Ford, the path whose length is m of v after i iteration can have a substantially more edges than i. For example, if the graph is a single path from s to t, then and we perform updates in the reverse of the order the edges appear on the path, then we get the final shortest step path values in just one iteration. Uh, this does not always happen, so we cannot claim a worst case running time improvement. But it would be nice to be able to use this fact opportunistically to speed up the algorithm on instances where it does happen. In order to do this, we need a stopping signal in the algorithm, something that tells us it's safe to terminate before iteration n-1 is reached. Such a stopping signal is 
a simple consequence of the following observation. If we ever execute a complete iteration i in which no m of v value changes, then no m of v value will ever change again, since future iterations will begin with exactly the same set of array entries. Thus, it is safe to stop the algorithm. Note that it is not enough for a particular m of v value to remain the same. In order to safely terminate, we need for all these values to remain the same for a single iteration.